separately tarnished, according to figures from the Residential Tenancies Board released at the end of last week, thousands of people are going to face evictions in the coming months. Where will they go? Well, I think in the first instance, the government with the local authorities uh, will do everything we possibly can to prevent people from becoming homeless. The key uh, aspect of that is supply. We have to build more houses and build them more rapidly. But in the short term, we will be leasing more housing. Uh, particularly social houses. We will also be um, expanding and have given directives to local authorities in respect of uh, retaining tenants in situ where houses have been sold for local authorities to buy those houses. And thirdly, we'll be looking at um, a new uh, cost rental uh, framework to govern situations where houses uh, are being sold that the tenants, uh, that they could be purchased and then uh, the cost rental model applied. Uh, so those are the, the short-term interim measures that will be taken. But the ultimate approach has to be to build more houses because the fundamental advice we received and rationale for the decision that we took was we didn't want to make the situation worse and create an even further prospect of homelessness into the future because it's the considered view of those uh, who advised the government uh, in terms of people involved in the housing area and the housing department um, that we would... Um, add to the numbers leaving the market at the moment and we certainly wouldn't be incentivizing anybody to get into the market. We need more people to provide our houses for rent. We need new people to come into the market uh, and we also need to retain those who are in the market and if we had kept the eviction ban uh, in operation the view is that that would have undermined those twin objectives and would actually have made the situation far worse. How can you stand over a policy which the Taoiseach has readily admitted will leave people homeless? Well, I think what I'm saying is we're going to do everything we can to prevent people from becoming homeless. Uh, I mean, the, the, the more fundamental, there's many factors leaving, leading to people becoming homeless, and, and they're wide and they're varied. But the, the fundamental resolution or the solution to this is more housing. We have to build houses more rapidly in terms of modern methods of construction. Uh, from a social by, housing perspective, April, perspective, we've given additional resources to lease housing. But last year, we built 13,000 houses. That was 10,000 more than the previous year. 9,000 were completed in the last quarter. There were commencements in 2,100 this, this January, the largest uh, since records began. Uh, so we are without question, uh, turning the corner in respect of new house builds. Um, and if we can get you know, a settled uh, situation over the, this year, I think we will make further progress in terms of building houses. Uh, but there's no doubt that the COVID, the two lockdowns, the war in Ukraine and the uh, consequent inflation did damage confidence in the market last year. But it's, it's coming back very strongly as evidenced by the Q2, the Q4 figures in 2022 and the commencement figures in, in January um, of this year. There are several reports in recent days that your government is reconsidering introducing tax breaks for landlords sooner than the autumn budget. Would you support that? Well, I think, first of all, the decision that has been taken by the government is to uh, develop a package of measures for the next budget. Uh, and, and that is the position, um, both in terms of to retain landlords in the market, but also to attract new uh, entrants into the market as well, where people would make their houses available uh, for rent purposes and to create uh, an environment and a framework that would um, incentivize people to stay in and, and get into the market. Uh, I think we have to avoid a rushed uh, decision uh, and, and rushed initiatives, but um, the decision has been that we will bring in such a package in, 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 at the next budget, which is some months away. Is it fair, in your view, that landlords are taxed on the rent as income, while large investment funds pay almost no tax on rent? I, th I think there are issues there, uh, and I think we can improve the situation um, for um, people, who, particularly smaller uh, landlords with one or two houses, um, and I think there, there is an issue in terms of uh, the yield ultimately that they get. Um, and but, but I think we also have to be conscious that decisions have unintended consequences in the market as well. So I think I take the, the, the view that has been articulated by finance that these issues have to be fleshed out and worked through in, 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 uh, and have to be comprehensive and have to give security and sustainability to the market, not just this year, but for many years to come. And that will be the intention in the budgetary package. Can you be sure that every Fianna Fáil TD will support your government in next week's vote? Uh, yeah, my view is that um, obviously with the, we want the Fianna Fáil party, obviously we'll be supporting 
uh, and will be opposing the vote, which is a cynical exercise by Sinn Féin. Do you know if you have all your party January 2024, when they mean Christmas uh, of this year. And they know in their hearts and soul uh, that people wouldn't be lifting an eviction ban in the middle of Christmas. Uh, so, in essence, they're asking for the decision that we took now to be taken um, uh, during Christmas time. I don't think that's credible. I, I don't think it's an honest position being provided by Sinn Féin. Uh, I think it would make the situation worse. Our advice was that if you wanted to keep it going, you'd have to keep it going for two years, and then you'd have to provide a very strong legal um, support and narrative to, to, to underpin that. Uh, but the fundamental reason we took the decision was that to keep it going would make everything worse um, and would postpone um, the situation, but would make it worse in the overall because we'd lose people uh, who are prepared to, to, to get into the market and, and to provide our houses for rent. Um, and that is the real hard decision that has to be taken, But uh, because otherwise we'll just continue to make it worse, uh, and more and more people leaving the market who feel there's no certainty or indeed that they're not getting a yield for it that justifies their continuation in the market. So uh, that, that is that, that for us is, is the logic and the rationale behind our position, and the Fianna Fáil party will be supportive of that. Job loss announcement by a large multinational company within the last 24 hours from Meta, 10,000 jobs globally. Do you know how that's going to affect workers in Ireland? Uh, I don't yet. We don't have a precise breakdown of that, but uh, we are conscious that about uh, there are about 164,000 people working in the technology uh, sector in, in Ireland. That went up 29% um, over, two, over the last two years. We've lost about 2,300 jobs so far uh, in, in, in the recent turbulence in the market, but I think we have to keep that in perspective. For any individual who loses their job, it's very serious for them and causes significant trauma in a family. But we will work through state agencies, through Enterprise Ireland, through Solace, and indeed the idea to help people who lose their jobs, if they do, uh, to help them get other jobs. We do know from Enterprise Ireland that quite a number of technology companies last year couldn't fill vacancies, and there was a huge pressure on availability of talent in the technology sector. Uh, so we would hope that the strength of the sector as it is would be able to absorb any job loss losses in Meta or indeed in other companies. Um, but we keep the situation under review, obviously, and, and, and monitor it, but we'll also have our agencies active to help people who might find themselves in difficulty as a result of this particular announcement by Meta. We don't have a precise breakdown yet, but we believe there's enough capacity in the technology sector to absorb any, any, any jobs that are lost. Tonista and Fianna Fáil leader Michal Martin in New York. It's 25 past eight. And we're going to stay with the issue of housing and the lifting of the eviction ban and talk to Regina Mangan. She's the owner of Liberty Blue Estate Agents in Waterford and Regina is in our Waterford studio. Good morning. Good morning, Mary, and good morning to your listeners. And you were listening to the Thonish Cesare. He ruled out any tax breaks for renters or landlords ahead of the October budget, and he also indicated that the eviction ban is gone and it's going to stay gone. What's your reaction? Well, I'm amazed, actually, when I hear the Thonish to speak about government not wanting to uh, take any knee-jerk uh, decisions. How can this be a knee-jerk decision to actually address the reason as to why small property owners are fleeing the market? We've been in this um, uh, situation, crisis, emergency, which has been evolving over the last seven years. And we've seen 43 landlords leave the market in the last five years. 43,000. Sorry, 43,000, yes. So um, how can this be a knee-jerk reaction? Um, ultimately, it really does smell of, uh, you know, party politics, sco uh, point scoring, um, and not actually looking at the big picture. But you know, there's never any one reason why, when you take a number like 43,000, why they have been leaving. There are a number of reasons, I've no doubt. It's to do with an increase in, in interest rates. It's also got to do uh, with, uh, many of them would say, they bought at, at maybe the height of the boom of their properties, have now uh, started to realise a return for them on the market to sell. They're all among the reasons, aren't they? Well, in my own experience in Waterford, I can tell you that 40% of the properties we sold last year were um, small property owners fleeing 
like running out of the market because it wasn't viable. Some of them paid close to 400,000 for two bed apartments. When the crash happened, they actually were 10% of what they paid for them. And then they sold for 120,000. So at least 30 properties that we sold last year sold for in the region of 200,000 under what those investors paid for them. So I don't fully agree with that. I think that what's happened is that the value of those properties has risen to a point that's almost palatable for a lot of people in the main. The thing is, though, and I don't know if you'd agree with this and you're in the business, a lot of these accidental landlords, as they're called, were there because of those those particular reasons along the way. And they they never intended to stay, did they? Well, I think at the end of the day, if you buy a property for your pension and between tax and over regulation, um, that it's actually costing you money with the rise in interest rates, it makes it very unattractive. And also the demonization of property owners. You know, not all things are equal. We've got these huge funds that pay zero tax and the mammy and daddy property owners are paying anything between 52 and 58 percent tax. So there's a massive lack of fairness and a massive lack of of um, urgency by government. And it appalls me to be very frank about it, because we are really seeing the problems on the ground. Uh, people cannot get properties to rent and we will see more property owners flee the market because a promise of uh, amendments to the budget for property owners mm. is weak. And we expected something in the last budget and we got nothing for property owners. Okay, well, let's look ahead to October then. We have the Thornish saying they want to develop a package to keep landlords and in, to keep existing landlords in the market and to encourage new entrants. So if you were advising Hall Martin and the government, what would you be telling them to do? Well, first of all, the RPZ has been problematic. The, the, the rent pressure zones. Yes, the rent pressure zones. So we have seen multiple property owners with uh, rents in the region of 500 euros per month in Waterford. Um, they have left because it's cost the money to keep the property. So we need to see the increase of rents within the RPZ to a fair market value. And I, 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 I specifically emphasise fair. Okay. Um, we also need a reduction on rental income okay. um, and we need to be able to look at people, to be able to transfer properties from their companies into their private pension funds without capital gain All tax right. and a reduction in capital acquisition tax. Very important on inheritance tax of rental properties. All right, Regina, there we have to leave it. Thank you very much for coming into the Waterford studio. Regina Mangan there speaking to us from Waterford. 29 minutes past eight.